This video is about crime. True crimes that actually happened. It's about violence and real victims. You can find more detailed information in the description. It's October 12, 1984 when Linwood Earl Briley dies in the U.S. state of Virginia. Linwood is the oldest of the three Briley brothers who make up the core of the local Briley gang. Five years ago, in October 1979, they committed their last crime. Now Linwood takes his final walk. Before his scheduled death, he requested to be baptized. The team of guards responsible for the death row grants the request. However, Linwood Briley does not express any remorse. A young man of about the same age as the convicted man is Linwood's executioner. He performs this task for the first time. Later, he will carry out 61 more executions on behalf of the state. Linwood's last words are, I am innocent. Then Linwood Earl Briley dies in the electric chair. Half a year later, on April 18, 1985, his younger brother James is also executed. In the same place, on the same chair, by the same executioner. But how did it come to this? Linwood was already sent to a reformatory at the age of 16 after he apparently shot and killed his neighbor Orlean Christian in 1971 for no apparent reason. The elderly woman was in poor health, and the gunshot wound inflicted by Briley was initially overlooked and only discovered by chance. Linwood stated laconically that he had heard the woman was sick and would soon die anyway. His brother James was sent to a juvenile detention center at about the same age after he shot at a police officer during a pursuit. Anthony is the youngest Briley brother. Although he was also part of the gang and involved in the crimes, he was never proven to have personally killed any of the victims. Therefore, he was spared the death penalty, sentenced to life imprisonment. Crime was an unwelcome guest in the Briley household from an early age, even though the Briley sons grew up under relatively good conditions in an intact family home, at least as far as could be judged from the outside. In their youth, the Briley sons were quite popular in their neighborhood. They were considered polite, the type of guys who would help carry the groceries into the house or mow the lawn. But in school, the Briley showed a different side. They bullied classmates, acted like bullies. They were not interested in the authority of the teachers or punishment. Only their father was able to keep them in line. At least for the time being. Apparently, the sons feared their old man. Why remains unclear. The boys collected exotic animals, spiders, snakes, and the like. They also seemed fascinated by street gangs, collecting newspaper clippings and keeping them. What happened to the Briley's parents happens to so many, they grew apart, a gap opened up between the spouses, and they eventually separated. The mother left the house, the family, her boys. And in Father James, unease grew. It seems the signs had changed. The father locked himself in at night, put a padlock on the inside of his bedroom door. The sons had overcome their fear. It was January 28, 1971 when Linwood Briley killed a person for the first time. He was alone at home, saw neighbor Orlean Christian hanging laundry, retrieved a rifle from the closet, and shot her. At first, nobody noticed that the woman had been shot. The 57-year-old was in poor health and had recently lost her husband. People blamed it on stress and grief. The bullet hole went unnoticed. Eventually, it was discovered by chance, and a new investigation was initiated. The bullet was found in her back, and further investigation led to the perpetrator, Linwood Briley. The teenager showed no remorse and was sentenced to a year in a rehabilitation center. Linwood Briley had become a murderer. But it would take until 1979 for the Briley's to unleash their full destructive potential. In the spring of 79, the Briley's launched an unprecedented series of violent crimes in Richmond and the surrounding area, often aided by their accomplice Duncan Meekins. The plan was to commit burglaries and home invasions. Get in, get out quickly. They didn't want to leave any witnesses. March 12, 1979, Linwood Briley knocks on the door of William and Virginia Buker. It is like a typical scene from a horror movie. Linwood claims to have car trouble and asks to use their phone. William B. offers to make the call for him, and Linwood gains entry. The rest of the gang follows him. They overpower the couple, tie them up in different rooms, and search the house for valuables, dousing the inventory with kerosene. When the Briley's are finished, Linwood also douses William B. with fuel. The Bookers are left behind. The plan is to burn them alive. By a stroke of luck, William B. manages to free himself and his wife and reach safety. 
The Brileys are gone. The Bookers remain the only known victims of the gang to survive an attack by the Brileys. In the following weeks and months, the gang commits numerous acts of violence. Robbery, murder, rape. The choice of victims seems as arbitrary as what the Brileys do to them. Their propensity for violence apparently knows no bounds. Greed drives them on and on. Michael McDuffie is attacked and shot in his home. A few weeks later, the Brileys encounter 76-year-old Mary Gowan, who is on her way home, follow her to her apartment, beat, rob, and rape her, then shoot her in the head. Mary Gowan initially survives, but falls into a coma the following day and dies shortly thereafter. July 4, 1979. Independence Day. 17-year-old Christopher Phillips is in the wrong place at the wrong time. He is near Linwood Briley's car, and Briley accuses Phillips of trying to steal it. The gang forces the young man onto a field. They beat and kick him until Linwood Briley smashes his skull with a cinder block. On September 14, 1979, DJ Johnny G crosses paths with the Briley's as he goes outside on a break. The brothers force him into the trunk of a car, drive him to a paper mill, drag him out of the trunk of the vehicle, rob him, and shoot him in the head at close range. They throw the body into a river. About two weeks later, the Brileys ambush 62-year-old nurse Mary Wilfong at her front door and bludgeon her to death with a baseball bat. The intervals between the gang's crimes are getting shorter, their attacks more brutal. In early October 1979, the Brileys attack 79-year-old Blanche Page near their house. The gang breaks into the woman's house, beats her to death. The Brileys also attack her 59-year-old companion, Charles Garner, and finally stab him to death. Investigators will state that the injuries Garner sustained are some of the most brutal they have ever seen. His body was tortured with knives, scissors, and a barbecue fork, and pinned to the ground. Blanche Page's head was beaten so badly that the woman could not be easily identified. The Wilkerson's It is unusually cold in Richmond, Virginia, this fall. It is October 19, 1979, and it is the last day of the young family of Harvey Wilkerson. James Briley, who is on probation for other offenses, is still on the loose in the morning and promises his probation officer not to commit any more crimes. The Wilkersons lived in the neighborhood of the Briley's. The families knew each other. It is said that they had a common hobby in the past, snakes. Perhaps it was this circumstance that led the Briley's to the Wilkerson's house or the closing of the front door by Harvey Wilkerson when he saw the gang on the street. The true extent of the Briley's crimes was unknown at this time, but they had acquired a certain reputation in the area. They were regarded as troublemakers, thugs, someone you wouldn't want to mess with. When the Briley's knocked on the door and Harvey Wilkerson finally opened it, things happened quickly. The gang gained entry, overpowered Harvey, his fiancée Judy Barton, who was heavily pregnant at the time, and their five-year-old son. The gang searched the house for valuables. Harvey and the child were held in the living room while several members of the gang took turns raping Judy Barton in the kitchen within earshot of the others. In the end, the Brileys covered their bound victims with sheets and killed them. James Briley ordered Meekins to shoot Harvey Wilkerson. He himself shot Judy Barton. With her died her unborn child. Anthony Briley, the youngest brother, was eventually said to have shot the boy. This was never conclusively proven. This allowed Anthony Briley to ultimately escape the death penalty. A police patrol in the area heard the shots but could not locate them. The Briley gang was seen leaving the Wilkerson's house. No connection was made. It took three days for the bodies of the young family to be discovered. Linwood Briley, who was seen at the Wilkerson's house on the day of the crime along with the others, engaged in a brief pursuit with the police accompanied by Meekins but was eventually caught and arrested. James and Anthony surrendered to authorities. The Briley's were seen, yes. But there was no evidence at that time. It was said to be a ring on Linwood Briley's finger that became the family's downfall. A ring that Linwood wore and that originally belonged to one of his victims. And the fact that the Briley's were seen leaving the Wilkerson's house on the day of their murder. Duncan Meekins also escaped the death penalty. He was a teenager. Only 16 years old actually a good student, from a decent home. But he was also a rapist and alleged murderer. An accomplice. A follower of the Briley's in the gruesome wake of the gang. Meekins was convinced to become the prosecution's star witness. In return, he was not sentenced to death. He spent 30 years in prison. His request for parole was denied in 2019.
He is now housed in a special facility and living under a different name. Through the investigations and with Meekin's help, the Brileys were held responsible for a total of 11 murders. 12. If you count July Barton's unborn child. Crimes committed during the relevant period and in the area of the gang could also be on their account. It is said that there may have been 20 murders. In October 1979, the Briley murder spree ended, but not their criminal career. In prison, they deal drugs, rob and beat up fellow inmates, pressure or bribe guards with the money their drug trade brings in. On May 31, 1984, the Briley gang pulled off a final coup. Brothers Linwood and James escaped from maximum security prison's death row along with four fellow inmates. One of the largest manhunts in U.S. history begins. The Briley soon part ways with the group. The other fugitives are soon arrested again or turn themselves in. The Briley's have been on the run for almost three weeks. Eventually they fall into the trap of the investigators, who tap the phone of one of the brother's uncles. Her plan to escape to Canada doesn't work out. Less than a year later, Linwood and James Briley have had their death sentences carried out. Her remains are buried. In the end, only memories and the pain they caused remain. Anthony Briley is still alive today. He is still in custody. His parole applications have so far been denied. If you like this video, please consider to leave a thumbs up or a comment. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to get notified when there is new true crime content waiting for you.